In this video, I am showing you how to make a fully bespoke, adjustable self-tie bow tie, much like these two. You don't need much or any, any sewing experience, I don't think, to make this, just an understanding of how to use a sewing machine. You'll need a bow tie making set that I provide in linked in the description. It's a set of three, so you can practice if needs be. And you also need some cloth to make your bow tie out of, an optional interfacing or tie canvas, and a pattern, which I provide with the bow tie making kit if you buy from me, or I also show you how to make this one. But if you have a completely different bow tie pattern that you would like to use, then you can skip straight past the pattern drafting. Although you can trace around a self tie bow tie that you already have, or you can, if you have a pattern that isn't mine, you will need to work out the seam allowances that it has. On some paper, start with a straight line 59 centimeters long. On either side of the line, we need to make two parallel lines one centimeter from the original. This makes the strap. From the right or either side, mark a perpendicular line. Measure 6.2 centimeters along the straight line from the perpendicular, then another 6.2, then another 6.2, then 14, then 9, and 15. From each of these, draw out a perpendicular line to either side. To make this easy, I'm numbering these 1 to 7. Mark 3.2 centimeters either side of the original line of 1 and 3, indicating the shape of the peak and the leaf. From lines 2 and 4, measure 1.8 centimeters, again to indicate the shape of the bow tie. Making the shape, I made a template for the curve between the two points that I used to curve from the high points to the low points all identically. Also curving from the points on the fourth line to the strap. On the long original line, again, we can mark two centimeters from the first perpendicular line that we drew. We can create a diamond point bow tie pattern. From here, connecting the points we marked onto the first right angled line. This is a design common in most less formal bow ties, so you wouldn't put that point onto Marcella or black tie bow ties, we'd use the straight. We need to add seam allowances to the bow tie, add 5mm to the entire perimeter. I could have added it in the original measurements, but I wanted to be very clear about the final dimensions and the seam allowance on the pattern. I can use the same template I made earlier to trace the seam allowances. I'm cutting the strap pattern along line 7. I am adding the 5mm seam allowance to the perpendicular line at the tip of the bow tie before the point so that I can fold away the point to create a butterfly bow tie with the same pattern. Place your pattern onto your desired cloth, ideally on the double, with the inside facing outwards, as we tailors will often cut. We will need to cut two pairs, but one of the patterns needs need to be cut along line 7, and one will need to be cut along line 6. Lay the pattern onto the cloth as economically as possible, for no other reason than being economical. I had once used old ties to recut and sew bow ties from. Very nice silken tie canvas that was. I'd refer to my other cutting videos if you want guides on what I'm thinking about as I trace and cut them out. I don't want to weigh down this video. Using sharp chalk, quite gently cutting on the inside edge of the markings so that it retains its dimensions. 
We have our bow tie pieces, so now I want to cut my tie canvas. You could use anything, though ideally quite light, such as a fusible interfacing, if or even nothing. I just always like a sewn in canvas of some sort. Hence I have my canvas on the double as well and place my longer bow tie side onto it to just cut a pair of canvases, cutting one shorter to match the shorter tie. We need to put the loop ribbon onto the bow tie now. The normal way is to cut the strap down and replace it with the ribbon, though I want to do it in a different way. We need to put it onto the correct side, so I'm splitting the two pieces of cloth and I'm removing the top and setting it aside. The correct side of the cloth is now exposed and you can tell because my cloth is much shinier. I need to see what is line 5 that I marked onto the cloth onto the correct side of the cloth. I want to cut down my ribbon. I measure from the 13 and 3 quarter hole one centimeter towards the nearer raw edge and torque that line, cutting the excess away. I place my ribbon so that the line we cut is on the line that we chalked, that the numbers are facing the bow tie and the ribbon is laid onto the spread of the bow tie. I pin it in place so that I can fix it with my sewing machine. I want to preferably sew it with a 0.5cm seam allowance. I'm folding the ribbon back to its original position over the strap and pressing it down. I'm sewing the ribbon a little differently to how it usually seems to be done. I think it's neater, but be aware that usually the ribbon replaces the strap. You can look at other commercial bow ties to see how it can be done. I can personally think of about five different ways off the top of my head. Though this, where it replaces the band, is a much better way if you are canvassing and using a relatively thick material for your bow tie. Before machining the bow tie, I fold back one of the sides on each of the bow tie strap, one centimeter and press it over. I'd suggest it doesn't matter which side you fold down, but I would also suggest if you are thinking about the details, make it the cloth that will be on the inside of the bow tie. So at least make sure you fold down the ribbon on that side of the bow tie. If you are fusing the cloth, then iron that onto each of the bow ties. I'm just sewing it on. Either way, I want to cut off the last two centimeters or so of the interlining. And on the side with the ribbon, it may get bulky, so we may want to cut the strap portion of the interlining to about level with where the ribbon starts, as well as the cloth behind the ribbon. I'm doing neither, but especially when you're using something other than a lining or silken cloth, then it's most advisable to cut them both away. If you want a label, most bow ties I've seen have them stitched on by hand after the fact, but I like to think that we could sew it into the seam, on the shorter bow without the ribbon. I rather want my bow tie unlabeled though. Holding all three pieces, or two as appropriate together, sew them with a half centimeter seam allowance and back tack onto the fold of the one centimeter we folded over. Holding them together all the way, 0.5 centimeter seam allowance all the way. At the tips of the bow tie, we will stop precisely on the corner, you know, 5mm from the raw edge, obviously, sticking the needle down to pivot the bow tie on the corner. Since I'm making the aforementioned more formal butterfly bow tie, then I am sewing straight down to the other instead of sewing a point. Maintaining a half centimeter seam allowance, keeping the two or three whatever pieces flatly together. Back tack again on the fold of the one centimeter we folded over earlier. Doing the same on both sides of the bow tie.
At this stage after machining I would always press the stitching, trimming the threads before moving on. Before folding the pieces inside out I suggest first cutting the corners of the tips of the spread, also snipping into the neck a small amount so that they fold inwards much more easily. On top of this, something I want to try is to fold over the canvas side of the entire perimeter of the bow tie. I expect this will make it easier to get the stitching neatly to the edge of the folded out bow tie, since we are unable to press the seam open. We need to fold the pieces inside out. I find it best to use a knitting needle or chopstick to do this. Pulling the internal layers apart from the outside and pressing the chopstick into that towards the strap. Importantly not using the sharper end of anything to force the stitching because it might very easily tear through said stitching. With both of the pieces turned right side out, we can press the bow tie neatly flat, very importantly making certain that the stitching is pulled to the edge of the cloth. At the end of each strap, there should be one clean folded edge and one raw edge protruding an extra one centimeter. To attach the hardware, I am folding the extrusion into an arrow before using a needle to tie a thread around the tip to make it easier to stick into the opening of the strap. We need to put the T-hook onto the bow with the ribbon. Pull it into the strap quite taut and we'll stitch the strap closed as close to the edge as possible to fasten while we fold it into the strap and by extension the hook. sealing the buckle into the shorter bow in place in the same way. We can shove the hook through the buckle and hook it into an appropriate loop on the ribbon. We can try it on and test and adjust. <laughs> 